Survivor News. 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 Dot dot dot. Guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Purple Pants Podcast. I feel so weird doing the intro, but Bryce oh. kicked it over to me. We got a special episode today. Uh, it's not a recap, but we're going to the merge next week, and we decided to hit you with a going into the merge power rankings of the remaining 13 players. As always, I'm here with the baby boys. You may know him as the third boot from Survivor Kageyan. You may hey. know him as the founder and captain of the Purple Pants Podcast. You may know him as your favorite podcaster. It's Bryce Isaiah. Oh, oh! I Did thought Jack had a bell. I was oh, about to say, no, wait a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Wait. I'm excited to be here for this Jack podcast. So listen, I'm I'm ready to go. Let's go. <laughs> Imagine I had the bell, the bell ready. I've been waiting my, my whole <laughs> life for this. Uh, and as always, we got the first merge boot of Survivor winners at war. He may have messed around and won Survivor Ghost Island. Uh, you may know him from HGTV. I don't even think I said that right, but it's Wendell Holland. Yeah, 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 yeah. What up, Jackery? What's up? What's up? Uh, I mean, I pulled up in costume. I don't see any of the other baby boys. <laughs> I got a little bit of costume from last night still on my face. Uh, I was a little Zan. Uh, but I'm currently shaggy from Scooby Doo, as you could obviously tell by just the green shirt I'm wearing. Um, and Wendell is now Bob the Builder. Oh, I'm Bruce. Oh, he's Bruce. Okay. Um, before I kick it over to Bryce, uh, what we got today, we're doing a power rankings. Uh, 13 players left in the game going into the merge. And we're just going to be ranking them. Uh, we're going to go through one by one, say kind of where they fall on our list. We all kind of went for a different angle with this. Some of us are doing kind of who do we think has the best shot to win, and that's going to be the top of our list. Others, we kind of got more where do we think people might get voted out, which doesn't always directly correlate to, you know, how good of a player someone is. Um, we saw that so in that war, right? Okay. Exactly, exactly. Okay. And so without further ado, uh, you know, Bryce has – we're going to go one by one, say what, say our thoughts on each player, give them a number in our rankings. Uh, and should be a fun little episode, Bryce. All right, let's go. Well, first up, and these are in no particular order, but also keeping with the theme of the Survivor News this week, I was checking the comments. They were going off for Jack with his Pokemon, so I figured, you know, we'll do a Pokemon power rating. And a lot of people in the, in the comments, Jack, were saying how rare it is to get a Shining hatching. And so for us to get that live on the podcast, I didn't realize... Happen how special it was so uh <laughs> keeping in this order we have first up is oh, austin Man, the... and guys if you're not watching the uh youtube bryce has made each player a pokemon card so we got austin fire type he's got the energy burn ability bryce i love it <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm... Yeah, I uh, height five foot seven. Damn, did him dirty with that one. <laughs> That's messed up, Bryce. You like a short man? Is that I, what you're saying? We live for a short king. Uh, I don't know if the the, the name and the description changes at all throughout this podcast, but the image most certainly will. Uh, I mean, I guess I can kick it off. I have Austin, uh. And my list goes from 13 to 1, 13 being who I think will be the first merge boot, and 1 being who I believe is the winner. And so I have Austin coming in at a strong 4. I feel like he has made a lot of alliances. He is stacked physically. Uh, <laughs> he's easy on the eyes. And he's really likable, and he's physical. And after him describing the amulets to us last week, I really feel like he understands the game. So I have Austin at number four. And Bryce, he's really smart, too. Yeah. And easy on the eyes. When where do you have uh, Austin falling in? You know, I actually I, – I agree with Bryce that the, the man is like – a really good survivor player he's smart he's athletic um i just think that long hair brown eyes you know chisel, what chisel you know six what? pack it is my turn i didn't see those i didn't see those things soft but hard hands 
<laughs> Are you describing Austin or Corey? <laughs> um, so in, in Austin's case, what I thought was that you got the original Bello, you got the original Lulu, and you got this massive Reba coming in. So I thought that maybe uh, Lulu and Bello would kind of combine and start gunning for some of these Reba p- players. So I have him at 11, actually, despite his uh, his skill at the game, despite his connections, and he has um, an idol till the merge. So I think he'll get past the merge, but I have him at 11 because I think that they're going to find a way to to get go for him. Interesting. I don't think you need to do your I, man um, again. <laughs> I guess this is where we kind of differ on the philosophy we have going into the episode of you know, how, how we're doing these rankings, but I kind of like that when kind of calling your shot in terms of the order, but me, I actually have Austin kind of in a similar spot as Bryce. I got him at number five. Um, and it, my logic kind of combines both of your guys. I think Austin's really a triple threat. He's been really good in the challenges, been very social. And also last episode, especially we saw him give some really articulate thoughts on some strategy. Uh, and he's built a good relationship with Drew, Emily, uh, I think Austin's a, a really solid player, but to Wendell's point, I do think that as such a blatant triple threat, there's going to be a bit of a target on his back, so it may be hard for him to maneuver uh, to the end because there's a lot of players this season that aren't as physical as he is, and I think it's really going to stand out. So they're going to catch him slipping. Like you can't win, you can't win everything. So eventually, you know, and and X Jag. But to um to Wendell's point, though, I do. You know, even with your logic of kind of the, the order, I still I still put Austin a little bit higher. I just think, you know, if the target does shift to, to his side of things, he still has Drew as a shield that I feel like will probably go home before him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I can see Austin, you know, if I had to guess, probably a mid-merge type of boot just because he's a threat. But I think if things kind of the dominoes fall his way, uh, he could make a deep run. I also, you know, factoring in the, the Bello Reba uh, feud, you know, Austin's the type of guy I think will get along with a lot of those Bellow people and, and not necessarily won't put a target on his back. You know, I can see him getting along with a Jake, a Bruce, a Caleb, uh, obviously yeah. Caleb coming over from Lulu. So, you know, obviously when there's when there's a, a bit of a Bellow Reba dynamic, the, I think the people that can go deep are going to be the ones that can, you know, kind of make good relations with the other side. And I can really see Austin doing that. So, <clears throat> well, I, I agree with you there. I could see hey, why, would, why would we start with Austin? It was a random order, really, honestly. But I mean, I agree. I agree with Jack. I could see him going deep. Uh, next, we have J. Maya. I have J. Maya coming in number eight on my list. I think that J. Maya is loyal. I feel like she's on the outs with Reba. I feel like she is going to <coughs> be able to. Jump ship if she can, um, but I definitely think that she will still have a target. Uh, I want to see her go farther, but that's just kind of sort of how my cookie crumbles with J. Maya. I have J. Maya at six. Um, she has the amulet uh, extra vote if played together, right? Something like that. Um, and I see her, like you said, she's kind of on the outs with, with Reba, but I don't know how much she knows of that which could be to her benefit or detriment. So if she kind of knows she's on the outs, then that gives her some latitude to kind of go either way and kind of like um, be open to working with others. But I have her at six because I think that I don't think she is viewed as an imminent threat. So people can be like, all right, we can hang out with her for a little bit. Yep. I have her um, coming in at number 11, I believe. Uh, again, sort of similar mindset to Bryce, but a little bit lower. Uh, you know, not to get in the weeds on the edit, but we've probably seen the least from J. Maya of any contestant on this season. That's always a, a kind of a bad sign in terms of uh, odds to win. Uh, she's also just strikes me as a very you know cerebral cerebral player, which is which is great. But so far, we haven't seen her really crush it socially too much. Um, she seems like she gets along with, you know, some of the Reba people, but there's no one that really considers her a close ally. Uh, I also think that to the other players, they probably do perceive that she is an intellectual player. Uh, and without sort of the social agency to back you up with that, I think that could put a bit of a target on you. Uh, in terms of Wendell's rankings, I could see her going far, just kind of as 
I don't want to say a goat, but just as someone no one's really sees as an imminent threat. Um, but I think th- things are really going to have to change uh, for Jim Jay Maya to have a good chance of uh, taking it home. Okay. All right, I can respect that. We got Katora coming in next, and I have Katora uh, pretty high on my list. I have her at number five. I think that we don't see enough of her in her current tribe. It looks like she's on the outs, but I really still feel like her tribe has the most numbers, and I feel like given... Despite the fractures, I still believe that they will vote together. And I feel like we saw that girl's alliance. We saw how perceptive she was uh, in the beginning, calling out Jake with a lawyer. Uh, And now she has Caleb. I could see a world where Caleb Austin uh, brings her in. So I I have uh, Katora coming in at number five for me. I have her at, um, I have her at eight. And I've been looking, uh, we've been watching the Katora Bruce thing and I've, this whole season, I've been trying to figure out what's, what's the payoff going to be? Who is going to snipe who, who is going to make moves on who? And in this case, actually spoiler alert, I have Katora higher than Bruce. So I think that she'll be able to outlast him in the game. And, um, yeah, I have her, I have her at eight, another solid, solid number, but I just think that like, I think that's where she might fall. Yeah, my uh, Katura ranking is pretty similar to you guys. I'm, I'm smacking the middle. I have her at number seven. Um, Katura was an interesting one for me. I moved her around a lot when I was formulating my, my rankings. Um, obviously, seven's kind of right in the middle of, you know, the, the, the 13. Uh, and I think that kind of – she does sort of divide my list in a sense where the people above her I find to be, like, really solid players that have been maneuvering quite well. People below her – either just not in the best spot or maybe just not the best players. Um, Whereas Katura, I think on paper has all the tools to be a solid player, but so far we've sort of gotten kind of a one dimensional edit of her as sort of an anti Bruce force, which, you know, isn't the best uh, for edit or for gameplay. But I do think, you know, as we get to the merge, if she can meet some new people, make some new connections that she does on paper, have a lot of, a lot of the tools that could lead her to a win. So that's kind of why she's right in the middle of a, my rankings okay uh coming in next i have emily uh and i have emily particularly higher on my list i have emily coming in at number two i feel like emily came in hot the first episode with her coaching with caleb she has done a completely 360 seeing her on this new tribe it's like wow like i feel like she really has her footing and i feel like she may be a swing vote throughout the rest of the season and i could see emily going really far so i have emily at number two in my rankings bryce i am high high on emily too i have her at number three actually and my reason is We've only seen her etiquette stronger and stronger and stronger. We saw her 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 first her first episode. My goodness, we uh, it was like everybody everybody hated Emily, but she was TV gold, and we were hoping that she would stay on the on the show longer. And because of the hot mess that is Lulu, we were blessed enough to have her continue on. And because Caleb taught her some game, now it's like Emily. Even after what was it? After last tribe, after last tribal, when they voted Brando out, she was sitting in the middle, like holding on to Austin and holding on to Drew, like we're good, we're good. And I'm like, man, Emily is a different beast right now. So I think that she's gonna go far. I have her at number three. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. Uh, I got Emily at number two as oh. well, Bryce. Um, you know, you kind of encapsulate, again, not to get too in the weeds on the edit. I'm not, you know, one of those people that, like, studies the edgic or whatever, but just call it how I see it from the episodes. Emily's really had a, a start of a great story, a great turnaround story uh, compared to episode one when she was kind of a disaster. Uh, right. And now she's a, a lot of people's favorite. Um, I also just think I'd like to kind of make the comparison to sort of like a Denise from Survivor Philippines, where she goes to a lot of tribals pre-merge. A lot of her close allies are, um, you know, strong guys like a Malcolm for Denise. Emily's closest allies are now probably Caleb and Austin who could serve as shields for her. And she comes into the merge where 
she's one of two people from her original tribe, like a Malcolm and Denise, where, you know, she's probably not going to be seen as a huge threat. She's got Caleb as a shield from that original tribe. Uh, and she's shown some really solid strategic chops and her social game has really, you know, done a 180, like I mentioned. So I, I really think uh, Emily's in for a deep run. I, I think almost a lock probably for like a top five. So, you know, she plays her cards, but I, I can see Emily winning this season. Okay. Uh, we got Sifu coming in next. I have, I want to preference, preface this by saying i think sifu is a, a great person to have i enjoy watching him but i do have him rounding out my list at number 13 um and i don't mm, I, I feel like this is a combination of a lot of things i don't i think that sifu can go far there's a world where i could see sifu being final three uh but just as from what we have saw from him when his name was written down and kind of how uh, adamant he went and the levels in which that he went around camp and talking to everybody that just makes me a little nervous and if the target is on him again i just don't know how he'll act and how people will feel comfortable so i'm just a little worried for him so i i have him at number 13 in my ratings bryce we're gonna have to finally agree on something i have i have our boy sifu at 13 as well for for the same reasons uh He's just, uh, he's a character and yes, you're right. Like I could, I could see him sitting further down. Um, but I, I feel like I would only see him sitting further towards the end. If people kind of want to bring him there, I don't see him, um, making the best game moves. And so, yeah, I got, I got Sifu at 13, especially cause like he's on the outs with his tribe. Like who can he align with unless he jumps ship? Yeah, I'm afraid I'm going to have to uh, hop on board here. I've also got Sifu coming in at number 13. Um, and wait, before you uh, uh, before you say anything, Jack, I just also want to say that uh, when we were discussing this podcast, Jack made it very clear that we all needed to create our list. Independently. Independently and before 5 p.m. yesterday. And then we didn't even send our list in the group chat. So uh, when the baby boys sent their list over, I had already created mine. So this is uh, no collusion. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's an independent group of thinkers that all think people in, uh, it's a big trouble. Yeah, um, just kind of for the same reasons as you guys mentioned. Yeah, I think as far as a casting choice, Sifu's a great, great guy. He's bringing an energy that we've never really seen on this show, which is always kind of a welcome addition to any season. Um, but, you know, not even to knock him, because I think he would probably agree. He's he's kind of treating the game like he's at Tai Chi, you know, Tai Chi practice or whatever. Like, he's not coming in the survivor with the survivor mindset. He's just coming out to do his thing and be himself. And, like, it's fun to watch, but he's not, you know, he's kind of playing checkers when other people are playing chess. And, uh, you know, even in the last episode, we see sort of his first, strategic content which is essentially <laughs> like oh one of the girls i think is lying to me i have to be on the defensive now and he's like saying it like it's like some some big enlightenment of a strategic moment and it's like dude obviously yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're not you're not you're not uh reinventing the wheel here so uh yeah sifu I, i'm curious to see you know how, how is uh you know also you know we can factor in that two episodes ago if it weren't for sean quitting sifu also would have been going home so that's obviously a knock against him in the power rankings as well all right we've got miss kelly next i have kelly pretty high on my list i have kelly uh coming in at number three i think when caleb came over to the what was it the lulu bello when he came over to Bello, uh, and one of the things that he said was that everyone seems to want to be working with Kelly. Second or third episode, Bruce was like, baby girl, you my number two, uh, my number one. Kelly was like, really? And so she seems to have a really good rapport with a lot of people. Again, seeing her jump into action with Jake on the last episode, for me, lets me know that like she is playing the game, but still her authentic self. And so I see her going really far. I could see her in a final three. And yeah, my thing mm -hmm. is, if you're on the top of my three list, then that's practically my winner pick as well. But like I see Kelly going far, likable, strong. Uh, so I take my hat off to Miss Kelly. 
Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Oh. I got it. That's my winner right there. That's my winner. First winner pick. First winner pick. Kelly is my winner. Um, she just seems so strong. She seems like a great player. Uh, she seems to have her hand, her her uh, finger on the pulse of the game. She's a, a nurse. Finger on the pulse of the game. Uh, <laughs> okay with the dad jokes. Oh. I just, I'm, I'm high on Kelly. Uh, she just, she, in her confessionals, she looks like a winner. There's not much that mm-hmm. we see that's like undermined or anything like that. She just staying locked and loaded. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm high on Kelly. Man, I thought I was gonna come in here dropping a bomb because Kelly is also my number one. Oh, oh. and uh, I think Wendell, you encapsulate it super well. I just when I when I see Kelly, she's someone that I think you know has a great relationship with everyone. Like I mentioned earlier, with Austin potentially getting along with some Bello members, I think Kelly is a prime candidate from Bello to really get along with some Reba members. I mean, you look at a Julie, you look at a D, you look at an Austin. I think she's gonna be a, have a good relationship with all of them. Um, it's just going to put her in a prime spot. As far as what we've seen from her in the game, uh, I think she's a very perceptive player. Every She hasn't gotten a ton of screen time because she hasn't been to a single tribal yet, but I feel like every move that she makes or every like statement that she says, I just find myself agreeing with it kind of wholeheartedly and feel like she's kind of always just make, making the right choices and, and approaching things very well. And yeah, like Kelly, I just feel like someone you look at or you meet and it's like they just have winner vibes. Like someone, someone that's smart, doesn't come across as a huge threat on paper, but someone that's just going to get along with everyone is is just kind of knows the right the right plays. And I agree with that. What you just said, someone who doesn't come across as the biggest threat, like mm-hmm. post merge, I don't think a lot of eyes are going to be on her. There are so many other players, and and a player like that can easily be catapulted to the second half of the merge and like just come alive. And yeah, so high on Kelly. Yeah. Yes, I agree. And I'm sorry, I'm Go sorry. Ahead. And she's one of these strong women. And I feel like there are strong women out there that she could reach across the uh, to other tribes, link exactly. up with them. And now it's like, yo, we could do this girls thing. And yeah, my yeah, job is all women. I think the only thing that could hurt her is she ends up having too many options. And it's uh, right. what jumps to mind is maybe like an Omer from season 42 where you know yeah. he's got connections with everyone. He's playing his ass off. And then, you know, come final five, final six, everyone's like, dude, Kelly's going to win if she gets to the end. Like, we have to get her out. Yeah. Um, right. And I also loved Kelly when Brando was in. Uh, there was that girl alliance. And when information got disseminated, she took it and still had her number one with Brando on the side. So I look forward to seeing who and what relationship she can make uh, post-merge. Uh, next we have the baby boy Jake coming in and I have Jake at number nine on my list. I think that we don't really get to see a lot of Jake. I think that what the edit tends to show us with Jake is kind of, uh, giving us a little bit of health concerns. Right. And so it just makes me wonder, will he be pulled from the game? Like why show us twice this happening but i think that jake is uh, a great player seeing his weight loss journey i know that he has the fight in him um but i also could see a world where they need a reason to get rid of someone and someone might use that health you know that he fainted twice and so i could just see a world where he is an easy name to float around and once the name gets thrown out people are going to jump on board I I agree with um, a couple things. One of my concerns was the health thing. We've seen it a couple of times. Like, okay, are they going to pull him? Is he going to have an even bigger health health scare? Uh, so that is my first concern. I have him at seven, kind of for a similar reason as to why I put people in that section. Like, you don't seem like the super threat. Um, optics aren't that you're the super threat. So maybe you could skate past this uh, this merge section but also like around that time is when like the real players start to emerge and maybe they will snipe him so got him around seven i hope that nothing outside of game takes him out of the game i hope that health is not an issue uh because we've seen a bit of his story last season uh i we all know like jake is a great awesome guy he's he's fun to watch and let's just let's just hope that health doesn't take him out right yeah, I've got uh, him in a pretty similar spot as you guys again. I have him at number eight. 
Um, I did struggle a little bit kind of placing him. You know, I had Katura at seven. I was kind of going back and forth on them and then one other player. Um, you know, Jake, uh, we haven't seen anything too crazy from him strategically. And again, I'm a little worried about his health. I'd be really devastated if he gets pulled for, you know, health reasons. Um, but Jake just seems like a solid dude. You know, for me personally, if I was out there, I'd love to have a Jake on my tribe. Like he's just someone who seems like he brings good energy. He's funny. He wants to be there. Uh, you know, he's not, he's seems like he's not afraid to be a little bit vulnerable with his tribe mates too, which when you're out there, I assume, you know, that's, that's a huge asset that, that helps you build trust with people. Um, but yeah, just we haven't seen a lot from him that gives me a reason to feel like he might win. But we haven't really seen him, you know, have any missteps yet. Again, another player that hasn't been to a tribal, so we don't know exactly where he sits with things. Um, yeah, I just think Jake is kind of the, right for me. My rank is kind of the epitome, just like a solid middle person that probably won't win, but he's not doing anything, you know, wrong right now. Okay, let's see who we have next on our Pokemon card. We have oh, Caleb. Is that President Obama? I mean, Caleb. Okay. Uh, we have the wonderful Caleb. I have Caleb coming in at a strong seven. I love Caleb. I don't have anything negative to say about a Caleb. I think the only negative thing that I have to say about Caleb is that he is so perfect. And I think that he won't be a target right after the merge. But I think as the numbers, as we lose one, two, three people, I think his star will unfortunately illuminate. And I think if people have an opportunity to take a shot at such a handsome, smart, well-rounded, curly hair, brown skin. You talking tall, about me? Uh, uh, size 11 shoe, nice calf, nice smile, well-spoken, good breath. Uh, I think that <laughs> they would want to take a shot at him. So I could see him kind of roughly in the middle pack. Again, nothing to his own fault, just the fact that he is so likable and so great. I feel like once we lose a couple of people, People will see, uh, will start to see him uh, when the the meat shields go down. I think Bryce. I think everyone sees him. First of all, like I feel like he is one of these undeniable players. But what I will say is, since we're talking about Obama, Obama was the forty fourth president. I'm gonna drop the four and keep the four. And for me, Caleb is number four. Oh, I think, I think Caleb almost like. Um, I just think I think he has we're seeing now granted we he's gotten a tremendous edit which could mean like fallen hero 7 8 whatever but I think he's going to find a way to win an immunity or something find something and I think he's going to squeak all the way up to 4 but I think I don't think they'll let him go much further uh but yeah very 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 high on Caleb love watching him and uh yes Man, I'm uh I'm in the same boat as you, Wendell. I got Caleb coming in at my number four as well. Mm. Um, you know, I, I understand your logic completely, Bryce. Uh, but I do think, you know, continuing my analogy of the Malcolm and Denise, I think Emily and Caleb are in kind of a similar situation. Uh, so I don't think Caleb's gonna be in trouble early, despite, you know, kind of his glowing target. Uh and sure, I agree that, you know, come middle of the merge, people are gonna start looking his way. But I think, you know, just on paper. Of all the, the entire cast, I think Caleb has the most tools at his disposal as far as like his personality and his his you know strategy. Um, so could I see him going out at like a seven or an eight? Absolutely. But I think assuming that he's not going to be in trouble early in the merge, he's just too good to count him out. So you know if he wins a clutch immunity, maybe Emily you know extends a all the branch to him at some point, kind of keeps him in the game. Maybe he finds an idol. Uh, yeah, I, I just think it's hard to say that he doesn't have a very good chance of winning because I think if he gets deep, he absolutely does. But. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I'm just saying, I think if, he gets, if you're... he gets deep, he's got a good um, shot. I I heard you say tools. What tools do you believe are in his toolbox, Jack? He's personable. He's me Sorry, he's asking Jack. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the same as Wendell. It's, he's just a triple threat. He's super uh, personal, charismatic. Uh, you know, athletic, also the type of athletic that I think could be good in some of these post-merge immunity challenge with, you know, balance. He looks agile. Um, and then he's also just, you know, he's, he's got a good head on his shoulders. Seems like uh -huh. he's got solid strategy. Uh, you know, even I, I call back to um, 
the there was a there was an interview before the game even started uh, of Caleb. You know, it was like a pregame interview with Caleb on the island, um, and he correctly identified the breakdown of how all the guys would be placed on the different tribes to a to a T. He, he like he was like, okay, I think there's like three different nerdy guys, so they'll probably be like this, this, and this, and then he's like, they'll probably want like a you know, a black person on each tribe. So it's like me, Bruce, and like, you know, whoever and like Sifu will be divided up different differently. And then to balance these tribes, they're gonna put like a this, this, and this. He wow. and he pinned he to a T, he said these three guys will be on Reba, these three guys will be on Lulu, and these three guys will be on. So I just think that sort of sort of shows a different level of game perception. Maybe um, maybe a handler slipped up and <laughs> left the the tribe <laughs> sheet out and Caleb was like, oh, <laughs> Now he also said in his pre pre interview something about him like his jobs and stuff and how he just slips into jobs with no experience and he could fake it till he makes it and stuff. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he found a way to to sneak a little something, Bryce. One one more thing I wanted to say about Caleb, I remember during Ghost Island, I think uh, Jeremy Collins went on and spoke with Rob Sesternino, uh -oh. and I think Rob asked him about me or some something. So I remember hearing. Jeremy saying something to the effect of Wendell seems too likable and personable. I don't see it. I don't see him going to the, I, I can't see him winning something to that effect or, or yeah. And so in Caleb's case, I want to see Caleb win. I absolutely do, but he just seems so bright. He seems like just so great across the board that it's almost scary to his path seems scary. Yeah, and, and to that point, I do think you know he's so you know charismatic that in my in my in my experience in life, sometimes people are so charismatic that you kind of wonder like it feels a little put on. And so you know we've seen some people even when he visited Reba, kind of saying like he kind of gives me like a car salesman vibe. Mm. Um, we don't know if we can trust him because for me, just in life again, like you know people can be super charismatic, but if they're just if they're nice to everybody and it's always you know twenty four seven. You're kind of like, well, I don't know where your true intention right, where, lies. Some people are just like that, where they get along with everybody. But for me, like sometimes, I want to talk a little bit shit. Like, okay. <laughs> if, if, okay. If, you're with, if you're with a friend and they're, you know, not that it should be all gossipy, this and that. But, but I want to hear, I want to hear that you don't get along. Like, if you tell me you don't get along with someone else, it shows to me that we really do get along because you're you're not just putting on for everybody. Um, and so I think a Caleb is he's just like so positive. That if I'm in the game with him, I would be a little concerned. Like, well, if he's getting along with literally everybody, how do I know that we're actually close? But um, and so to that same logic, right? What you're saying, Jack, what does it legitimize Katora and Caleb's relationship? Because we saw on that episode when Katora was like, Well, listen, let me tell you about to the and he was like, Finally, like this is what I've been wanting to hear, spill the tea. Like it, with your logic, it makes me think that maybe he really is locked in with Katora. Yeah, and I, I think it could be trending that way. Um, yeah, that's I, I I can't argue with that. Yeah, like I said, you know, on that recent swapped Lulu tribe, I thought Katora was in a bad spot. You gave me some uh, some backlash for that, but now going to the merge, I think she's not in such a bad spot because she'll have some new options. Um, okay. Hopefully she can get past sort of her disdain for Bruce. Uh, <laughs> if she gets caught up on that, uh, it's you know. And of course, the edit like I'm sure she's not on the island like talking shit about Bruce 24 seven, but that's what her edit's been. Uh, yeah. And so hopefully we can get some 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 angles of her working a different direction. Um, yeah. Okay. All right, I've got Miss D, and y'all didn't gave y'all winner picks. <laughs> D, I have you coming in at number one. I see D as a full-blown winner, our first Cuban winner. I think D has been playing an excellent game. I think that she's strong. I think that she's smart. I think that she has what it takes. Uh, she wrote she wrote seafood name down and got J. Maya to spill the beans, said it was her. She has walked up and caught multiple people doing sus things. And instead of like condoning them or not condoning, instead of uh, giving them a lashing, she has allowed it to play in her favor. I think her 
her having a number one and Mama Julie is great. And I think that we, I, I just like the, I think that she's strong and I think that she has what it takes. And I, there is a world that I could see D winning. I could see her winning too. I have her at number two for similar reasons. D is a natural leader. She's so strong. Um, she comes like, like you said, from hardworking immigrant parents and you can just you can see that she's she's in she's locked into the game and she plays a strong game. I could see her winning some immunities, but she also has connections. She has her right hand person, Julie. And um, so now my final three is out there. You got um, Kelly, D and Emily. That's my final three. And um, I can see all of them getting votes at the end. I could see D and Kelly both getting numerous votes. So. Yeah, D, D is, is high on my list, just like yours, Bryce. I could very easily see her winning it. Yeah, I've got uh, D coming in at number three. Uh, so similar. My top three, I guess, is the same as yours, Wendell, with my, a little different order. But um, I think D is great. You know, again, on paper, all the tools. Um, I think the one thing that gives me a little bit of worry about her is I feel like she's shown she's so ready to, like, take shots that she's almost like too willing to take shots if that makes sense. Like I think the seafood whole seafood vote kind of worked out okay, but I think that was just sort of an unnecessary move by her. Um and so I'm worried that going forward, you know, she's going to be willing to make the plays that she needs to make that could propel her to a win, but I think there might be a point where she's a little almost a little too willing to do those and it might throw her off where she's like, "Oh, I got to make a big move." When sometimes it's better to just kick back and and relax, but um Given her cutthroat attitude, I do think that, uh, you know, the perception of her is, is great because I think people see her to be, like, super friendly, pretty trustworthy, uh, which allows her to, to get away with some of the, the shenanigans that she's getting into. Um, so, yeah, sort of similar reason. I, I'm high on D, but I just have her below Kelly and Emily because I think Kelly and Emily have a little bit more of that, like, composure about them where um, it just gives them a slight edge strategically. But... One thing that I noticed um, from you saying that, Jack, when we thought about when uh, when D was like, hey, we could throw J, J Maya instead of Sifu. Yeah. And when I hear something like that, I'm like, man, J Maya could be number three on y'all list of allies. Yeah, so man. if you're so willing to cut so and, and J Maya has I don't think she has any other connection. So scoop her up. So y'all are right. a trio. That's exactly how I feel where it's like. Um, you know, it, it, the, the big question for me there, and, and I guess we'll never have the answer to this in that moment, is like, is that a D who's evaluating options, uh, weighing those options out with their closest ally and decides, hey, getting out Sifu is the better move? Uh, yeah. In which case, I think that's a huge winner, a sign, a sign of a winner. Um, or is that a D who's like, you know what, let's get JMI out. Like, why not? You know, that, then that's a little bit more compulsive because I agree with you, Wendell. The big thing for me is, you know, sometimes people have their personal rankings of trust, right? And they operate based on like, oh, I trust Wendell the most. Like, I want to take him far. What you sometimes have to consider is where do I fall on Wendell's rankings of trust? If I'm, if I'm, for, so for like D, it's like she might not trust JMI a lot. But if you look at the scope of the game, it seems like JMI thinks you're one of her closest allies. And so even though you might not want to go far with her, the fact that she wants to go far with you as opposed to like a seafood who seems a little all over the place, that's sort of the criteria you need to factor in. And I don't think that's what D is really looking at necessarily. See, I look at it a little differently because I, I feel like uh, D and Tina have been close from the get go. I think that when uh, Julie, Julie uh, had been close from the get-go. I feel like when Sean came over, how easily J. Maya was willing to jump ship. I think that that kind of raised the flag for D. And I feel like Sometimes in the game, you have to know when to cut people. Uh, and I think potentially in D's game, getting rid of Jay, Maya, and keeping someone like a Sifu who inevitably could garner votes to get rid of. I think, I don't know, I just think it could be a smart move uh, for D. So I, I definitely think that she is looking at it critically and not like with any uh, uh, malice or I, I don't know. I, I, I yeah, think that I, she I thinks. Agree. I think, I think. In that moment, I think Sifu is the better choice, but that's sort of like, uh, you know, you can agree to disagree on that, and that's, you know, why the rankings are... And I, look, I don't think her evaluating that option is, is bad at all, because I think, especially when you have a close ally like a Julie, 
you know, being able to have an open and honest conversation where you're considering all your options uh, without fear of like it getting back to other people, that's ideal. Um, but I just think for me, and then all, like you have that moment that I think is, if it is her actually wanting to get Jmi out, bit of a red flag. If it's just her considering options, totally good. But you pair that with like a, um, you know, her 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 vote for Sifu, I think that's another bit of a red flag. I don't think there's ever really a reason that you'd need to do that. Um, of course, there was probably a miscommunication, but it's like, you know, if if Sean says he wants to quit and us three are working together, I'm turning to you and I'm saying like, okay, who are we voting? Like, I'm figuring it out. But- um, Devil's advocate, how crazy of a move would it have been if they would have voted Sifu and convinced Sean to stay? I mean, not I mean, maybe. I just it feel like crazy, it, but I don't necessarily know that it would have been good. Like, I mean, I well, well I mean, and, I guess, and that's why yeah. I don't disagree with that, but that didn't happen. You I, know, I, I, that I, I, worked I, out. Jack, Jack well, Denise and Malcolm season is years ago. You keep bringing that up. <sighs> Well, yeah, because that's something that actually happens. Okay, you know what, Jack? We're going to keep it moving, okay? Uh, I agree uh, with you guys. If they, if they got it to, if it worked, it would have been a pretty good move, but it didn't work. So, no, if that I, was, if, Jack, if that you was wanna, another if, shot. That was another shot. I know, if but if, if it's like, if we want to talk about, well, if that move worked out, they would be great. But, you know. I mean, listen, I said what I said. Sean could have won. But again, I still have D at three. So for no. all the for all the caveats I'm giving, I still think she's a stellar player. My logic was just kind of why I had her below Kelly and Emily. Okay. Um, but well, I think, yeah, we've got Mama Julie. Um, now this is gonna be a little bit of a hot take, right? So this not necessarily is in my winner order and not necessarily in my merge order, but I have Mama Julie at 12. I have her a little low, and Ooh. my reasoning is that I feel like in the D and Julie alliance, it seems like it's really the D alliance. And I feel like there have been multiple times where Julie has said what she wants to do, but is willing to go with like whatever one wants to go with. And I'm fine with that. But I also feel like with your closest alliance, I like, a maybe it's just me. I like to argue, right? Like I might agree with your point, but I like to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I mean, Wendell and Jack can attest to that. But so I just feel like I don't see, I feel like I hear Mama Tina saying the right things and being smart and vigilant. But I sometimes feel like I don't see her enough taking charge. So I have her at number 12, but and realistically, I I could see Mama Tina going to final four, final six. Okay. I mean, okay. Mama Julie. Okay. Now, Bryce, do you think that they will take a shot at Mama Julie before they take a shot at D? I don't, in the words of Jack, it hasn't happened, so I don't know. Did you say that, Jack? I mean, about something that was in the past, not the future. <laughs> I mean, so that, listen, okay. <laughs> so, uh, Bryce, um, the only to to your to what you're saying, I just don't see her as a threat to where anyone's really looking at her that early post merge. I see her so tied to D, and you're right. You get a lot of you gotta get a lot of D's strong words, and you get a lot of Julie's like. What I what I view as her hearing that in and in, in a confessional, like thinking like mm, maybe maybe uh, that that doesn't sound great, da, da, da. but you do get her deferring um, to D sometimes. But I see this alliance going far, and what I see breaking it up is Caleb, and that's why I have Julie at five with Caleb at four, and I think that somehow some way Caleb's gonna squeak his way into that top four. Get these ally out, but that's where I see Julie, if not higher. I see her. I I have her at five, but if she, if she's like this with deep man, they could they could go the end together. Okay. Yeah, I'm more, in, I'm more in the um the Wendell camp here. I've got Julie at six. Uh, I don't disagree with some of your points, Bryce, but I think twelve is a little bit criminal given some of the other players that are uh, I think clearly worse than her. I actually, to your point about 
Lock them up, Jack. Locked up. They won't let me out. Whoa. Locked up. They won't let me out. Let me get this uh, thought out because I, I don't want to forget it. Um, here's, here's the thing. So, um, I think that. You won't let me out. I'm gonna forget what I'm trying to say, so I'm just gonna let go ahead me and out. get locked up. We won't let me out. Oh, <laughs> what's the verse? I don't know. We just I keep don't know either. Either. <laughs> okay. So, if, if I that like, song, no, Jack, no, I'm, I'm trying to think about what I'm trying to say here. So, I wasn't even listening on words. Um, <laughs> I think that if I had to make a bet on who is the most likely to be a losing finalist, I would bet on Julie. And I think that's a good and a bad thing for her. I think that her, you know, you kind of talked about her willingness to defer to her alliance. I, I interpret that more as being a flexible and a good ally. Um, I think her pushing her, like, I think I like, well, I think Julie has a very good strategic head on her shoulders. Um, but I do agree, you know, as far as being a winner at some point, she's going to have to be able to, take the reins right uh and i do agree that that's might be a little bit of a challenge for her uh and it's just you know it kind of just factors in like we've seen it a lot in survivor sometimes the old a lot of times the older woman the mom figure will go far but doesn't usually win um and maybe that's just you know she's not super physical uh like our i think she's done solid in the challenges but she's not you don't look at julie and be like that's a threat uh and so while i think she is playing a good game and will likely co to continue to play a good game. That's why I don't necessarily see her, you know, being a winner, but I do think she's a very solid player. Um, I disagree a little bit with like you looking at Julie and not seeing a threat because in a world that uh, say in the merge, well, I know we can't, it's the future, but say in the world, a lot of the meat shields go and we're down to the uh, individual eliminations. I could very much so see mama Tina, that is Julie being a huge physical threat. Look, I think Julie's been great in the challenges from everything we've seen, but you, you can't you can't look at me and say that if we're on that beach that you're gonna look at Julie and be like, that's the biggest physical threat here. <laughs> I didn't okay. That's not no. what I said. No, and yeah. I'm gonna look at you and say that I think that there is a world after some of the meat shields go that will look at her that. and I, she, I think she could very well win a couple challenges. So sure. that's the threat. But I, again, like it's just survivor perception, whether it's true or it's not. So you the agree that it, there, where, she is a threat to win a challenge. But it's just, it, it, and look, it's kind of, yes, it's kind no. of ingrained in people's minds, I think, due to like past Survivor. You, the people well, that I are think people threat, looked at Jam Jam the, last the season. The they looked at Jam Jam last season and didn't see a physical competitor. Yeah, and wasn't. <laughs> Brandon, Brandon Cotton was passed out and Jam Jam was still lifting up the uh, Look, I, the I'm, not, I'm not agreeing or disagreeing about the you know, semantics of who's actually a better player. But I just think it's very ingrained in people's mindsets that if you see someone who is a former NFL athlete, that's automatically going to be a bigger threat than someone who's 47 and is like 5'2". Well, that's Wendell's height and age. And so people don't look at him like a threat. Anyway, I, I don't subscribe to the society norm. So I always... I'm not saying that. that I do either. I'm just saying I mean, that's as far as perception uh, goes... As far as perception goes, it's it's historically been the most difficult for a older mom figure to take home a win. I mean, aside from like a Tina Weston, we really haven't had that. Well, didn't um, Denise you know, win? You keep you keep bringing up Denise. Did Denise, Denise win? But Denise was like Denise was a uh, like a beast. Like, and, uh, but uh, you're, you're right. Beast. That is a person that I should put in that category of like the older mom figure. But also, she didn't really come across as a mom. I feel like here's here's the comparison I'll make. But what did she come across of, as? The auntie, she was, she was just on it, like a little bit. I think she and Malcolm had more of a partnership than like a mother son relationship. Um, and when ever so D have with Julie, Julie. kind of like a mother daughter. Um, and again, I still have Julie at six, I have her higher than you, Bryce. So I don't know, I, who, I, who I, I wait, but um, listen, I'd rather take that than get to the end with no votes. You have her at the end with no votes, but that's I, the same I think, thing. I think the the the, the criminal step, the criminal the jump the step made for Julie to win is if she's able to and I think she could do it if she's able to turn that switch a little bit and get a little cutthroat I think it could it could help her um and this yeah I, I, the comparison I'll make off the top is sort of like uh 
She's kind of like a Julie, I think Rosenberg is her last name from uh Edge ah. of Extinction. Kind of always in the always in the in the kind of usually in the votes, a solid president has presence, has a couple of good allies, but just never kind of takes the shot herself and then ends up um going deep. But I just think given the fact that I see Julie going deep a lot, even though she might not necessarily be a winner, just the the, the likelihood of her being near the end, as you always say, Bryce, a lot of it is just getting to the end. So um all right. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I, but well, I, I, I think Julie's just been solid so far. Yeah, I agree. And like I said, when I said my number, it's not really a where I think that she will lie, but just where I have everybody else. Oh, we got Brucey Bruce. We got Brucey Bruce. We got Bruce, 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 Brucey Bruce. Okay. Now, y'all know I love me a good dad joke, and I love a crazy drunk uncle. Uh, I love Bruce. I do have Bruce rounding out in the number 10 spot. For me, I feel like Emily has illuminated his spot, and while he has been able to make alliances with people. I feel like post-merge, it's a different show. And I feel like at any given time, people can use the fact that like, he's the celebrity on this season. Uh, and given with Katora spreading the propaganda, I think that it could catch like wildfire. So I love Bruce. There is a world where I could see Bruce going to the end. Uh, Going far, but I just have him at number 10 because, again, I feel like after the first three people are eliminated, again, I think people's threats level, people's physicality, and I feel like physicality, I feel like, you know, we've got Austin, we've got uh, Caleb, but when drunk Uncle Bruce took his shirt off. He's ripped. Okay, I, I mean. What? I was just saying, I might, you know, Rhode Island does the body good. Bryce, you know what? I kind of agree with you. I have Bruce actually even lower. I mean, lower as in sooner, closer to the merge. I have Bruce at 12. And I have him as a victim of the whole Drew and Austin advantage situation, whether it's whether it's uh, Drew leaving uh, or something, I think that Bruce is going to be a casualty of their stuff. Um, we've seen Bruce's edit start to turn to kind of like a, uh, um, you're kind of getting a little annoying. Um, <laughs> we've had Bruce. I love Bruce. You know, I love watching Bruce. I think he's fun. Again, I thought he was going to be a casualty of ca Bryce. What are you doing? Sorry. I think again. I think Katori is going to get a little further than him, and I think um, I see him shortly after the merge. What you got for us, Jackery? So wait, real quick, Jack. So you're saying in the war against Katori and Bruce, you have Katori taking Bruce? I have Katori getting further. So you have Katori taking Bruce, Jack. In the war, thank you, Jack. In the war against Katori and Bruce, do you have Katori taking Bruce, or do you have Bruce taking Katori? Uh. Well, to, I guess to answer that question, I'll give you my ranking, and I have I have Bruce at twelve. I have Bruce at twelve as well. Oh, um, so that means so, you have Couture taking the war. Okay, generally, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but look, I, I think Wendell kind of hit the nail on the head with a lot of the reasons. I love Bruce. Um, yes, but I just think when your edit becomes you be rubbing people the wrong way. Um, so, it usually doesn't lead to victory. But quick question though, like critical critical thinking of the episodes. Outside of Caleb and Katora, who else have we like have we seen say that? It doesn't matter. That's his edit now. That's the thing. I think Bruce is solid and generally a pretty decent player. Um, and he's got some solid allies like a Jake and like a Kelly. But yeah, especially once you get in a group of a uh, thirteen. Um, but what maybe, maybe that'll help Bruce kind of diffuse his energy around to some other people. Um, what but I kind, of, I kind of agree with Wendell here. I could see him. You know, I could I see mean, him you being. I I could see Katora kind of flipping over to like a Reba and taking out like a Bruce. Um, and I love Bruce. Uh, but yeah, I just think what we're seeing from him now is that he's he's a little. It's just not winner vibes. It's very entertaining. 
but it's not it's not winter vibes. Well, I mean, two things. Katora's gripe with Bruce was that people were eating it up and loving it, and she wasn't buying it. So that tells us that like people do like them. Uh, but I mean, I'm just playing devil's advocate, and you're right. Like, I, well, I don't know, right? Because I definitely can see winter vibes with Bruce, but I also could see people targeting him. But again, if we're going, if we're going by merchandise, oh. Okay, because that's a factor as well, right, too. We can factor that in. Go ahead. If go we're ahead. going by talk merchandise. Go ahead. Talk about it. I'm just saying, Bruce has the winner's edit and merchandise and the way that he's pushing them out. The merch uh, is hard. The merch so is hard. I'm just saying, I like it almost what? reminds me of a Tony uh, Vlachos, my season. Vlachos. Uh, uh, with his... Uh, idol finding stuff so i don't know like I, i'm just saying so, so there's a lot yeah. of things to factor I guess, in i guess what i would say is to your point i think bruce is a very polarizing figure where some people love him and some people don't can't can't stand him uh and does like he has his people uh but i i think when you look at someone like that where it's like you love him or you hate him it's very difficult for that type of player to make it deep because i think usually the winner is someone who can really get along with everybody and in, in people sense. loved or hated tony yeah but tony's tony like there's and also i think with tony you know for for all the strategic moves he he made that bothered some people people i think from from what i've heard is that on a day-to-day -day basis people really get along with tony um and, and also those strategic moves are strategic game moves if they didn't like that strategic game move that's different from someone not liking how you're saying, oh, go do this, go do that. Go. That's not a strategic game move. That's just like, oh, man, this guy's getting on my nerves for pushing me in any particular direction to do these chores. Yeah. How do we know that's not strategic? So it's a strategy to be like, chop that coconut, climb that tree. Save your energy. Well, I, I know, I know this, this question is kind of rhetorical, Bryce, but the way we know that that's not strategic is I think Bruce himself has said, I know sometimes I could be a little pushy, like be the dad. And I don't want to be that dad, but he's he's doing it. And so it's unintentional. All right. And let me ask you this. Jack, do you love Ben? Yeah. Wendell, do you love Wendell? Yes. Okay. Uh, so I mean, he might he might be the strategic Carl Winslow. He might be the strategic but here's, here's the thing, Philip man. Banks. I get the compare. Uh, obviously, that's more extreme because that's your own dad. But if I'm out on Survivor with my dad and he is making me do chores, like I'm gonna be a little <laughs> like I'm gonna kind of be like, dude, like this is not a good partnership. We're on Survivor, like I'm not here to like clean everything for you. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's a world in which that it could come off like that, but still at night have very endearing conversations and people still like, you know, so I'm just saying, like, I feel like we're only getting one think, half of the apple. I think if I was out there, I, I'd love Bruce. And like, maybe sometimes it would rub me the wrong way if he's being a little bit bossy, but I think you can also interpret that as like, if he's willing to kind of like be kind of the dad to me, that's, that usually means he likes, you. like he usually means he likes right. you. And so if I'm out there, I think I get along well with Bruce, work with Bruce. But just the fact of the matter is, we see some people that don't like Bruce and like that's all right. So last question here, right? Um, we see what Caleb did with Emily. Is there maybe a world that like Katora could have a come to Jesus with Bruce and say like, Hey, and maybe he'd be open. Like, you know what I mean? Like, because if somebody don't check you, I think someone might check him, but I don't think it's gonna be Katora. So, I mean, there's so a I world where receptive. I question how receptive he might be to that check-in. Well, I, but I always say it's about the approach. It's about yeah. the the tact. So there, it maybe it's Jake. I think the the best person to do it would be Caleb, but I don't think Caleb would ever do it because he wants to silently assassinate Bruce. Oh my god! Yeah, and the thing too is like that checking. A lot of times, I think in the survivor setting, requires the person that's being checked to come to you a little bit. Like when Emily got checked, she talked to Caleb. She's like, she was kind of asking for some guidance. Whereas Bruce is the type of guy, you know, as a father and uncle figure, if I'm a Caleb out there, I'm gonna I'm not gonna be comfortable going up to Bruce and be like, yo, you need to chill out a little bit, bro. Cause he's like, dude, I'm older than you. Like that's kind of the energy he gives off is that he's wiser than people. Um, and in life, yeah. that's true, but in Survivor, that's that doesn't necessarily work. I feel like it's about how 
how you approach someone with that. But who knows? Yeah. But but I, I agree. And sometimes here's the thing. It's a risk. And in Survivor, I don't want to be the guy that's going to go take that risk of telling you how to fix your attitude. Also, because A, it could, it, could, it could bounce back on me. And B, sometimes you don't want people to fix their attitude, right? Like if Bruce is rubbing people the wrong way, that's a shield for me. So if all of a sudden, I, if I help craft Bruce into a great player, it's like, <laughs> where's my like he's not sharing the millie with me and i actually think that could be something where to a caleb like he's helped emily evolve and that's worked for him so far but maybe down the road it's like if emily wins this thing and like beats out caleb he's gonna be like why why did i do that <laughs> like you know what i mean sometimes you don't want people to be like getting along with people no i get it uh all right we got the baby boy drew basil um i actually have Drew B on my list at number 11. I feel like I love Drew. I think that he's smart. I think that he's a great narrator. I could see him going farther, but I feel like after last week's episode and seeing how closed off he was to working with Brando, it just makes me question with the merge uh, intimate uh, that I feel like. With it what? Intimate. Oh, he's getting intimate with the merch. Yes, because it's getting closer. <laughs> so um, oh. I feel like it worries me uh, with him and the merch and all of these other players and how he'll be able to open up. And it just also worries me, him and that arsenal that he has, I just feel like people normally F up the bag, then they don't use it properly. But I do think that he's smart and I think that he has what it takes. So I just, this is just, I have him at number 10, just strictly off of the Brando showing. I have him at number nine. Cause I think that he will get past the merge and, and right after with his safety without power. But like you said, Bryce, when you have these things, sometimes, sometimes you don't use them properly, but also because he's so close with Austin, I wonder if he'll be so fast to pull that safety without power and ditch people at tribal instead of rocking out with his people so he can vote in a particular direction. So, um, yeah, I have him. I have him at nine. It's like, you know, he makes it through the merge, a couple votes. And in my in my opinion, they go for Austin first and then they get him. Yeah, I I, I didn't know if my ranking here would be a hot take, but it looks like it's not really. I also have Drew at number 10. Um, you know, he's obviously got some strategic chops, but I think he's fumbled the bag a few different times. Uh, and just kind of just overall, especially last episode, shows he's sort of set in his ways on certain things. And it's just he's just so being so obvious about, you know, his desire to go after Bello. And if you're usually the usually if you're the figurehead of that movement, even if it works to begin with. The target's gonna bounce back on you at some point. Not to mention he's like six five. Like you're literally walking around. People are gonna. You're. you're I think there's somebody who said like you're noticeable. Like you're. People are gonna see you and think about. Oh, he's coming for us. Um, and yeah. he's not that scrawny. When he, him, and Austin was walking on the beach, I was, you know, you know, doing my zaddy calendar potentials. And Drew got a little chest. He been doing some push ups. I don't know about that, man. I think Drew's. Drew's probably like. Six five, like one eighty forty. <laughs> he looks. So, you think so? You think that you could beat Drew, uh, Jack, in an arm wrestling? I would hope so. I probably have like thirty pounds. I mean, obviously he's out there starving, but I think generally I probably have like thirty pounds on him. So that's a yes. I'd like my odds, but okay. You think you could beat? You think you could beat? Talk yak. I'm just. So I mean it's yes or no. So that's fine. So you said yes. You think yeah. you could be Drew in a, a mud a mud wrestling competition? Yeah. Where are we going with this, Bryce Isaiah? You think you think you could beat Drew in a slip and slide contest? <laughs> what what as in as in like you know what a slip and slide is? Like they yeah. have the little so y'all run and whoever gets down to the bottom first. So just who gets yeah. Okay. You no, I'm, not to, I'm not trying to go at Drew here. I, just I know. Think, I'm just asking. Even, even think, in himself, I believe, in like pregame interviews, he acknowledges he's not the most like athletic. And um, neither are you. So he's about to spin it. Like you think 
I, I could just, be Austin at a Jello wrestle. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're asking the question, do you think I could beat Austin and Caleb in a Jello pool? I don't know. <laughs> we weren't asking the question. I mean, but if you asking me, I'm just saying I don't know. <laughs> but I like to find out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh, just a yeah, I, I just think uh, Drew is a little too. You think you can meet head. Drew on the Soul Train line? On the Soul Train line? Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is, but yeah. So basically, you just who you think you can beat Drew in a dance off? Have you oh. seen Zoolander? I, I, am I am I dancing off against Drew or am I dancing against Basile? Oh. <laughs> No, this one you would be dancing against Basil. Ooh, I don't, I don't know, but I'd like to find out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, me and Drew having a dance off would look like two of those like wacky inflatable things they got at the, 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 the used car stores. Which one, you lanky boy? <laughs> Some people might like it. All right, and rounding out our list, we have Kendra. Kendra. I have Queen Kendra at number six. I feel like Kendra has spirit. I feel like Kendra is great around camp. I feel like Kendra is a fighter. I feel like Kendra is, can be a beast. I feel like we haven't seen the peak of Kendra yet. And I just, you know, anybody that's willing to put a worm down their throat and Whoa. regurgitate it back up and let y'all know that they didn't eat it is a friend of mine. So, <laughs> I mean, I like Kendra's energy. I think that uh yeah we i feel like she might get a little spicy um i think she might get her emotions might get the best of her at times but i think that she's in a pretty pretty solid spot so uh i we love queen kendra over here i agree we love queen kendra over here but i have her at 10. oh yeah. criminal bryce take a breather we just saw Kendra get blindsided and it seemed like she was super shocked. And I want to see how she responds to this. I think that she can respond by making it a few episodes. I don't know what, how, what, how she wants to shake the tree or what she wants to do to respond to it. But I have her at number 10 because she, she looks strong. Um, she's a big personality and soon going for her. Okay. Yeah, I've got a. Uh, I, I I bounce around a little bit here. For me, the the biggest. Yeah, I've got Kendra at nine. Um, I kept moving her, her, Jake, and Katura kind of around in that in that group. Blasphemy. Um, did, didn't you have her at like eight? <laughs> I had Kendra at six. S where did I have her? I had Kendra at. Why can't six, I find her? I don't even know. Yeah, six, six. six. So okay. Um. Kendra, like, I think she's got game, um, but she definitely right now is kind of lacking in allies. Um, she comes across as a little bit, you know, goofy. Um, like I said in the last podcast, kind of like a Nora from uh, Island of the Idols, where, you know, I think she can maneuver pretty well. But when people kind of look at you as sort of be a little silly, uh, it's hard for them to kind of give you their vote at the end. Um, but, you know, you know, now that we're kind of wrapped up on the list, I do, you know, I, I think Kendra, I, I can't, I, I compare Julie to sort of like, uh, ironically, Julie from Edge of Extinction, uh, and Kendra is sort of like a Nora. I, I want to, I'm going to, we'll, we'll get into it as we look at the full list, but I think to call my shot here, I think my final three might be a um, Kelly, Kendra, and Julie. Oh. I, I'm just going to. Because obviously, so not I don't have too much grounds for that, but I just want to call my shot and say that I think that's the three. Okay, but we have Jack's power ranking with uh, Kelly winning and Sifu as the first merge boots. Uh, we also have Wendizi with a Kelly winning and a Sifu uh, <laughs> merge boot, but we have D Emily Caleb and. Julie rounding out his top five. Yeah, uh, the same list, bro. <laughs> right. The swap uh, Maya and Austin, and it's like the same list. Wow. 
And I have a D on my winner list and Sifu as my first merge boot. And I, my top five is Emily, Kelly, Austin, and Katora. Uh, so those are our power rankings. <clears throat> I we really love this. We all have the same top three. Right. So, I mean, that's a, I mean, that says something. Either we've been podcasting too long together or we know a thing or two about a little survivor. But I do have an idea. Yeah. To all of our listeners out there that listen to Survivor News, I would really love to see your power rankings as well. I would love to see your top who wins in the first merge boot. And if you email me your power rankings to the Purple Pants Podcast at gmail.com, when we get to the finale and whoever's list is right, we will have a Bryce and Win and Jack care package for you. So send in those power ranking list, purple pants podcast at gmail.com. Jack responds to all the emails. So we're going to get them. We're going to alphabetize them. And if you, so should I say if they get it or who has the closest? Whoever has the closest. The closest. Okay. If they get it on the dot, then it's the most. And you get it on a dot. Okay. And you in LA, you get a date with Jack. So that's the top prize. But seriously, I do want to see your power rankings because I do, I want to see where our listeners are, where y'all at with all of this. So purplepantspodcast at gmail.com. Put the title as PP Power and give me your list and we will combine them. Oh, and- whoa. <laughs> No, 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 that's not going to be the title. You're not doing PP power. No, 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 no. What's the name of Bryce's favorite club in LA? Hey, I don't get it. Purple Pants Power Ranking. No, it makes sense. PP Power? Just right. I don't, okay. Okay, and and also, if you don't want to email PP Power. If you could just drop in the comments your your merge boot and your winner. Uh, yes, so but in can... order to be considered, you got to email it. So yes, we have just rankings. don't put PP power. So, okay, just put power rankings. Thanks. Y'all go ahead to tell me what that means. Is that the name of that this episode going to be? Is it, is it PP power? I mean. <laughs> that sounds like a guy's alliance. <laughs> you, you get the YouTube notification in a couple hours. <laughs> Purple Plants uh, Podcast has PP power. <laughs> We're gonna All right, get well, listen. Well, this has been your Survivor Rankings. Uh, and we'll see you this week covering episode six. Let us know. We're out. Thanks, guys. Survivor News. 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 Dot, dot, dot. Huh?